In May 1915, a month before her 36th birthday, Grace Wilson embarked for overseas service as matron of the 3rd Australian General Hospital. Matron Wilson and her fellow nursing sisters thought they were destined for duty on the Western Front, but were instead sent to Lemnos to care for the Gallipoli casualties. When the nurses of the 3rd Australian General Hospital landed at Lemnos in August 1915 and marched into camp accompanied by a piper, they quickly realised the challenges of the task ahead of them. The conditions on the ground were harsh. It was oppressively hot. Water was scarce. Their equipment had not yet arrived. And there were no beds for the patients. Sister Beryl Hansen described setting up the wards as getting order out of chaos. Writing in her diary on the 11th of August, Matron Wilson's frustration is palpable. Convoy arrived, about 400. No equipment, whatever. Just laid the men on the ground and gave them a drink. Very many badly shattered. Nearly all stretcher cases. Tents were erected over them as quickly as possible. It is awful to see the way they are shattered and to have nothing to give them. No comfort, whatever. All we can do is feed them and dress their wounds. They beg to be washed, but we have no water. It is awful to just leave them in their dirty bloodstained clothes. A good many died. They were beyond hope when they arrived. It is just too awful. One could never describe the scenes. Could only wish all I know to be killed outright. A week earlier, Matron Wilson had learned that one of her brothers had, in fact, been killed by a sniper at Quinn's post. Despite the difficulties, the hospital was soon functioning efficiently. From September, Number 3 Australian General Hospital held an average of 1,000 patients. Medical facilities at Lemnos included an X-ray department situated next to an operating theatre. In October, one report noted the Australian hospitals on Lemnos were in very good lined hospital marquees, the patients comfortable with good beds and bedding. Once they had established good order, some of the nurses set about creating a welcoming atmosphere for their patients, decorating the outside of the tents with stones. One nurse recalled a competition between them to see who could create the nicest ward and tent. Though they worked hard, the nurses could occasionally take the opportunity to rest and explore Lemnos. Picnics with friends from the AIF, or afternoon tea aboard naval ships moored in the harbour, were among the favoured activities. The hot springs at Therma proved popular among nurses and soldiers alike. As autumn and winter approached, the nurses had to contend with the strong winds of Lemnos, which repeatedly blew down hospital tents as well as their own quarters. As winter set in, rain and freezing conditions added further difficulties. The rate of illness increased both at Gallipoli and on Lemnos. A number of the sisters became ill with what Matron Wilson called this wretched Lemnositis. Throughout her service, Grace showed great concern for the nurses in her charge, and they held her in high esteem. Sister Young wrote, Our matron is a sensible woman. She has been a dear to the nurses and such a fighter. My word, she has had to fight every bit of the way for any little comforts we enjoy. Sister Selwyn Smith echoed this praise. At times I think we could not have carried on without her. She was not only a capable matron, but what is more, a woman of understanding. She saw and understood many things without having to be told. And she was very human, too. The Third Australian General Hospital completed its work on Lemnos in January 1916 and transferred to Abbasia in Egypt, where Matron Wilson was awarded the Royal Red Cross in May. She went on to serve in England and France. Grace returned to Queensland in January 1920. She continued her leadership in the nursing field in the interwar years and was appointed Matron-in-Chief of the Australian Army Nursing Service Reserve in 1925. At the outbreak of the Second World War, Grace Wilson again embarked for service overseas, this time in the Middle East. Illness forced her to return to Australia in 1941. In 1954, now in her 70s, Grace married Robert Wallace Bruce. Three years later, she passed away and was accorded a military funeral with full honours. <laughs> 